Heather, I have had you as a guest on the show before, and so I'm excited to have you back for something very special, and I know something that you're passionate about that you've been working on for a while. Uh, so I know that today we're going to be focused in on the topic of self love. And, and I absolutely love this because I think that we need to sometimes have reminders <laughs> about how important it is that we start first with, with loving ourselves before, you know, really we can have love for the other people that we bring into our life. So thank you so much for being here, Heather. And I can't wait to uh, hear more about the book that you have coming out and I'll let you, I'll let you share that, but just thank you. Thank you for, for being with me today. Thank you, Lisa. And I, I just, I love so much our last interview that we did, and I'm looking forward to this one again. So thank you so much for having me on again. It's such an honor to um, be here and self-love. Oh boy, <laughs> what a huge <laughs> topic. I think the, mo the, the best quote I ever heard, and it was from a lady that had been on the news here in my city and, it, and I can't remember her name. So I'm sorry to that person, but she said, I'm as important in my life as everyone else. Oh, right. And I've, and I think I had it on my Facebook profile, like from like 2017, when I started my publishing company. And that was, and just before around the same time that we had done what self-love got to do with the volume one, which was the co-18 beautiful soulful women telling their stories as well. And that just, I don't think I've ever forgot that I'm mm. as important as everyone else that I, I, that. I look after. And it just really took home for me. And I think I heard it right after, um, my husband had, my now ex-husband had gotten back from Afghanistan uh, from serving with the U.S. military. And, and I just, because there had been, I was a solo parent of three children and, and I lost myself in all of that. And we just, we lose ourselves in all of the demands of life. And I think that's really kind of where it, and it, you always have those, those bottom moments where you think, oh my goodness, I need to look after me because those around me are going to lose me if I don't look after myself first. And I think that's the premise of all of it is mm -hmm. uh, when your your spouse or your isn't there and you've got all these other people to look after and, and you land up in an emergency and you've got three little kids, which did happen. And that was a rude awakening for me. It was mm -hmm. a huge awakening for me. And mm -hmm. so therefore it was always health and eating well and getting sleep and rest and all of the things and even my healthcare background, but healthcare workers are the first ones to drive themselves into the ground for the base of service. So um, that's not, a, that's not always a great example. It's becoming more mainstream in the, in, in the world now of medical, but of medical healthcare and our hospitals, especially post COVID, but um, and mental health, because it is a form of self-love. So mm, it is, it is. And, and I, you know, I, I know, you know, kind of like what you're talking about when you said that, you know, we get so caught up in caring for others and doing and doing and doing, uh, and we, we know that we need to take care of ourselves. Like we may think that, however, we don't make the time to actually schedule some, you know, that, that self-love, that self-care that I need to do something for me so that I can be strong for those around me. Uh, you know, and, and, and we're just, it, it's not anything intentional. I don't think most of the time, but time goes by. And then all of a sudden we're in this place of exhaustion and not really knowing what's going on with us. And, and taking care of ourselves, or able to, like you mentioned, be strong and take care of the people around us. So I want to, uh, real quick, you did, you mentioned your, your last book, but I do want to uh, kind of dive into the book that you have coming out. And like you mentioned that it is a, another compilation, um, 18 women, and you, you've told me that it's global. So how exciting is that? Women from all over the world coming together and, and share a little bit, uh, first off, you know, tell us the name of the book. And then I know it's coming out in March. So we'll talk about the Launch and everything, but I want to hear kind of, you know, what made you do the second book and, and where, um, you know, where did you find the women that are, you know, being vulnerable and sharing their heart? Perfect. I love it. So yes, we have, um, so I look to uh, social media a lot, actually, and see what is on, what are people talking about? What do they need to hear? What real stories, what and, and who needs to come in board and tell them their story and share their stories. Because I've always said that the success of the compilations is if it changes one person's lives, it, it, one person's life, it was so worth it. And I have tons and tons of stories of lives changed because of compilation books mm -hmm. and women sharing one chapter of their life. Um, because even the authors change and love themselves more because they've stepped into something that they've completed and they share in a vulnerable space. And it takes them a little bit out of their own fear as well. And I always say that it, it, to be visible, you have to love yourself to step into a different, a different plane. And 
it's uh, and to be okay with showing up and to be that inspiration that others need because we're always just you know that one hand ahead of someone else and or maybe five hands it just depends or that relatable experience so when um, self love so what self love uh, volume one came out what self love got to do with the volume one which is on Amazon it was in uh, 2018 and I found and I basically it was through the connection because I asked and that's another self love piece right we ask for help. That was a hard lesson for me because I was always like the mortar, like, oh my goodness, I'm not supposed to help for anything. I'm just supposed to exist on my own in misery. And it's life is really nice when you have people that that you love and love to be with you. Like it's it's just a beautiful place, and that they love to help and they love to serve, and it's just a very peaceful place. Uh, so when the second book came out, I've done like ten compilations of my own, and they've been on varying topics: obstacles, money, balance. But self-love was really in my own gear because I've just gone through my second round of self-love, so to speak, post-divorce, post-caretaking uh, um, parent, and just really coming back um, and falling back in love with my company even, um, and falling back in love with my own life because um, it's it's been three years. <laughs> and when you go through divorce or when you go through all of the things, and that was really what inspired it was just my own journey again. And But I have the tools and I have the people in my life that I go to when I'm in those spaces. So I'm thinking, okay. And I'm also seeing a lot of that space of, um, you know, people really need this post COVID because there's been a lot of loss and how do they come back? And those comeback stories are, are huge. And I thought, okay. And I, and I have a whole new network now that I know that they wanted to write. So I reached out to about five people and I said, I am doing this project. The book is called self-love elevated. It started off as uh, what self-love got to do with the volume two, but then it was the, just the, the stories that are in this book is like the second level of self-love. Like you first of all have to acknowledge that you exist and you're okay to be here, but then you kind of step into a whole new realm when you've got a, when you're an entrepreneur and, or you've done the work and you want to serve in a bigger way, you have to love yourself. Um, and it doesn't mean egotistically, but a lot more or in, in, a, in an elevated way because you're digging into more of who you are and bringing that into the playing field so that's kind of where the self-love elevated came from and we have elevated and we're vibrating you know we're, we're vibrating on a different frequency a different energy a different you know i call this the year of the revival uh because everybody's getting revitalized post-covid and people are like oh i can okay i can live again actually and it's good now and so that's where the self-love elevated come in. It really is a global presence. And I've asked, and it was all the connections from like, say, three people that brought that global community together and who they know. And mm -hmm. some of the people came into the book and some of them didn't, but I now have connections all over the world. And we probably are going to have a wait list for this, the self-love three <laughs> uh, oh, just getting out there. So who knows what that one's going to look like, but it's coming and it will come because self-love is such a precedent of thing. And it's all ages. It's from, you know, 99 down to... 2.2 years ago, <laughs> like, you know, like it's really about, we're always on that self-love journey. So we have um, women from the Philippines. We have a woman from Ireland. We have a woman from uh, Dubai. We have um, states all across Canada, some of them local in my own city and some of them that actually one girl lives near you. So we have a um, story of like how, uh, you know, um, she's a horse lover and she went through breast cancer and how her the unconditional love for horse um, helped her through that journey. Um, there was anxiety uh, from being raised in, you know, different, uh, in different environments, um, you know, family expectations. And uh, then there's other ones that are talk about open adoption and how she found her, her beauty within her own self to when she had to love another human being and it's, it was an open adoption. That's what she chose. Um, then there's uh, stories of immigrating into Canada and what that all felt like. And, you know, and it's just really, there's such a vast, vast, versions of the stories and, and expectations and stories of self-love and just really what that all encompasses because self-love is more than just massages and facials and all of the things it's it's a lifestyle it's an inner ticking and I think that is really the and it's the most priceless thing that we have because I know when I left my marriage the words that I chose were it's really not you it is me and I need to choose me because my soul is dead. Wow. I, because you know what? That's powerful right there. That's very powerful. Uh, and and I, 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 it's interesting that you could take something going on to on with you that, you know, is so emotional. So, um, you know, it, it trying on your, your soul and turn it into a recognition of your own 
need for self-love to to dig into that area and really put focus on that um you know i I, I really think that that's, that's very powerful that you were able to do that, that you were in a place where you were able to recognize that. Thank you. It was, it was tough because um, I was just saying the other day that when I look at people who do PowerPoints of family, and I think I had that once, but I chose to break it apart. But it's the wording of it. And my kids will say, because they're the ones that said, you're not happy anymore. What's going on? And they said it to their dad and I actually, and, and, and it really got me thinking. So for they're watching constantly watching. Hmm. And at that point I chose self-love and I said, I'm going to model this for you. And I'm going to model it in a way that you can, you don't have to stay in a relationship that isn't serving you and you will be okay. Hmm. And I'm very blessed because he's a good man. And he, and I said, we have to do this from a space of love. And that was my good friend, Dr. Aaron Oxall, you know, cause we talked about it. I said, how do I do this without anger? How do I do this without, you know, I mean, there's going to be hurt, but how do I model this so that my kids don't get destroyed? Hmm. And that's a big thing. Right. And, yes. and we did it from a space of love wow. and we're still friends through it my divorce cost me $1,200 because we did it together. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, and our kids are, um, and you know, and our kids are, are okay because of it. Yes. They really were like, you know, 17, 19 and 22 at the time when we did, but it's all I'm saying is, is that it was just, and I use that story because it's like, when you lead with love magic, it can happen and it doesn't need to be, um, it doesn't need to be a horrendous event. Um, yes. I know in some cases, and that's not speaking for everybody. That's for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, and I also knew how I communicated it. He would respect me enough to work with me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I love, you know, that you're, you're being vulnerable and sharing this story with us because I feel like, um, you know, it, it is a great lesson uh, leading with love through any type of situation you know, that path is going to take you somewhere much better, you know, than if you, if you have all of this angst and this anxiety and this, this fear and, um, and, you know, anger, as you mentioned, uh, inside, because um, that's not going to serve you, that's not going to serve the people involved. And, you know, even though this is not, you know, a, a wonderful, happy subject, it still led you to a path and down a path and on a journey of, you know, being elevated at, you know, where you wanted to be and who you wanted to be uh, and, and not losing sight of you permanently. You know, like think about later on in life, you know, had you not recognized and chosen to, you know, to address something that was very painful, um, you know, how you might've felt then about, well, who am I and what am I doing? And now I'm, you know, 75 years old and, and I, I, maybe I've missed out on some things. And, and, and like you said, I really love that, you know, you were modeling this for your children and letting them see that it, it's not good to be unhappy. You deserve happiness. And, and I think that, you know, we don't, we don't think about that sometimes because we're, we've, you know, we've had this vision of where we think our life is going to go and where, what we think we need to be doing a wife, a mom, a worker, whatever that might be. And then all of a sudden we're, we're in this, but we're not really living and enjoying the life that we've created. Uh, so, so I think it's brave when we can, we can come from a place of self-love and recognize what it is that we need to do. And then also project that, that same energy and, and, you know, model that for the people around us to say, it's okay. And as we hear a lot of times people, they hear the word self-love or self-care. And a lot of times growing up, we we've thought of that, or we've been, we've been told that that is selfish. 
And it's not, it's not selfish. It is the, one of the best things that you can do for yourself. Uh, so I, I really, I really love that. um, community. So I want to, I want to, uh, touch on, uh, how community impacted you during this. And then also, I know that you have an amazing community yourself. So I'd like for you to share some of that as well. Perfect. The community piece is, um, huge. And it was my, I, I mean, I think we have different spheres of influence um, and spheres of support. It's like we have that inner circle of friends and family. Sometimes our family will support us. And then other times our family wants to keep us safe. And then other times it's our friends that, that want us to do the bigger things and they see the brilliance in us. So that's like one space. So really ask yourself in that self-love space, like, what is it that you want for your, your, you, you, uh, because we all, we can be a mom, but whatever we do, whatever we want, our children will see and they'll model and they'll celebrate us in that. So we have that. And then we have those friends that we know from Facebook, much like you, you've supported me and we came together in that mastermind. And that's how, and I mean, those mastermind moments were huge communities and support. Mm -hmm. And so the support comes from different ways. And I always say that it's the five pillars. It's, and I, and I model these five pillars and that's why, you know, and it kind of goes in a very quick scenario of courage. When you step into courage and you make different choices and not making a choice is a choice. So even if you do step into something and approach it with curiosity, connect to self, connect to the world and get into that space of creation, get into that space of journaling and, and approaching things with, um, because nothing's permanent. You don't have to stay in something that's, that's not serving you or you can make changes to it, but then through all that and you connect to self and then you connect to the world because you attract in different people and different and, and like-minded people who want to go and serve, want to go, you know, be better coworkers, like whatever that might be for you. And then you start to build the different communities of the different things that you want in your world. And, you know, and even if you have a job that, you know, you may not like every day and you kind of go, Ugh, ugh I have to go. Um, but surround yourself with maybe um a community like do volunteer servicing for the positivity or you know and i might often say like join a different business model like do a different business and and, and get into the personal development of it because there's all of those and i always did that even before i started my company and i worked in healthcare i always had a very small little side hustle that i did because the personal development and the friends that i made were just huge mm. that's what kept me positive Mm -hmm. And I learned so many things. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a lifelong learner. I will learn until the day that I cannot breathe or take my last breath. I will always be a learner, <laughs> so to speak. And the community within this particular book is huge. Um, we have all walks of life. We have teachers, we have entrepreneurs, we have a banker who turned into a self-love coach. We have, um, you know, a lady who her, oh, her, the opening of her, her book will be, I stood before the judge and I had, and I was going to be sentenced to 12 years or 24. Um, you have, dot, dot, dot. you have to read the book to find out. <laughs> um, but these are the types of things that, you know, people have been through and mm -hmm. it's real and how they reacted to that mm -hmm. and how they respond, not reacted, but responded to those, um, to mm -hmm. the, all of those life circumstances. And it's just, um, it's amazing. The community of these 18 women that are with us and they're change makers. They are doing things within their communities. They're doing things within their, their global, their global networks. And um, from immigrancy to support of helping women move from countries into Canada and the U S like it is incredible. The things that we are totally unaware of. And when you have conversations with people and you learn what they're doing and the impact that they're making that, and then you step into that community and it's only through one connection or one ask that can make all the difference. So mm. reach out to your friends on your, on, in your Facebook messenger and invite them into a chat because that's how you create a different community. And that's mm. how you start moving through the spaces of loving yourself enough to create a project, asking for, Hey, this is what I'm up to. Who do you know? And, and then you have 18 beautiful souls that all of a sudden are now writing a book together. So Wonderful. that's really the essence of how it all yeah, happened. I love it. And I know you have a community, which is get you visible. Yes. So, so before we wrap up, if you'll share, you know, how, how can they find you and be part of your community? And then also let us know about, you know, the book launch and all of that. Perfect. So the book launch will be, uh, we will be posting on Facebook uh, as well. So follow me on Facebook. There's Heather L. Andrews business page. There's my personal profile, Heather Andrews. There's the get you visible community. Uh, those are probably the best places uh, to follow the happenings of the self-love elevated book. It launches March 15th. 
and just stay tuned. But if you want, there is the Get You Visible community on Facebook and you can join there. Um, it's just being reactivated as we speak. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, because I had to show up for myself as well. And now I'm showing up for everybody else. So it's good. It's good now. So I just appreciate you so much, Lisa, for um, having me on the show today and just follow us on Facebook. And that's probably the best place to find me. Okay, well, definitely. And I will make sure that I drop links to uh, your, you know, social media. And I know that once the book is ready to launch out, um, you know, if we're following along in the community, we can learn about it there. But also, I'll make sure that as soon as I have the link from you, I will put that in the show notes as well, for those of you listening and watching, uh, so that you can be one of the first. I'm already curious about some of the stories. Uh, thank you for sharing some of the little highlights so that we, you know, it really has piqued my interest already uh, on a couple of the stories. And, and I'm just so honored to, um, you know, be a part of your life, Heather. And, and I, I really enjoy, um, you know, when we get to chat and you coming on the show and sharing and being so vulnerable. And I truly value what you're doing and what you're putting out into the world because um, it's beautiful and it's very necessary. Uh, so thank you so much for all the work that you're doing and your community that you have. And I, I'm just very excited about your book. Oh, thank you so much. And you know, the power of the compilation because you've written as well. So, and uh, you, yeah. And I think anybody that shares their story, they walk a little different after they do. Um, in terms of the bravery, the courage, the transformation, the spiritual journey that happens with it. So it's, it's yeah. Huge. Yeah. I love it.